scripture from the book of Psalms, starting at chapter 98, at verse 1. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath, hath he openly shewed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Amen. Yes, amen. Won't we sing Bless the Servants 63 in the Red Book? Mm -hmm.
boy got up about 13 years old. And I couldn't hardly hear him. I thought, well, what's he doing? And I looked his way. And I thought, well, he's quoting scripture and, and he's not even reading it. I mean, boom, 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 boom. About 20, 25 minutes. It wasn't. Since he sat down, there was another one got up. That was rusty. And he starts quoting scripture. Boom, 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 boom. And I said, praise the Lord. And I said, Lord, praise the Lord for our children that they know all the books of the Bible. Amen. And I wish that they could be here tonight so that they show what work that God's doing in them. Yeah. And you know, God has given you all a gift that will, that will help you in so many ways all the days of your life. And you know, you're not supposed to say you're proud. But we are blessed in this little church. And I was talking to Sue the other day, uh, Vision of Grace. She had given me a tape that my niece had lost or, or something. And Here Am I was the name of the song that she liked real well. Anyway, that's why I went play at my funeral. Right. And uh, so I called her and she said, well, we down here, da, da, da. So she said she'd meet me at Kmart. Lo and behold, I gave Charity that one because she loved it so well. I went and get, but did you know she brought two? She brought me one and her one. And I got really blessed. And she said, when are you all having a revival? Or when do you all need us down here to sing? She said, I love going to a spirit-filled church. Amen. And you know, that's what this church is. We don't lock our Savior outside. Amen. We don't lock the doors here. Because we have nothing to fear. God's love casts out all fear. Amen. And, you know, anxiousness and being upset and all those things is, is a sin. You've got to trust God. You've got to have faith. Faith is a substance not yet seen, but hopeful. And, you know, I just can't express. And I, I said, Lord, I'm singing to you today, but I wished there was something that I could give you. And, I, and as I started crying, hand you. And, and, and the Lord spoke to my heart about, about the crown. That when you get to heaven, yeah. you want to have a rope in the crown. And I said, thank you, Lord, that I have something to give you, Lord. And I get to heaven. And I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, and soul. I got some heavy burdens. God knows all about them. I've been praying for our marriage. It's not what it should be. I know Satan's out to the kill, steal, and destroy. But God can do anything. God holds the seven seas in the palm of his hands. God can restore anything or anybody. There's nothing too hard for my God. And I love my heavenly father. I never had an earthly father. I never had anybody in this world that ever loved me in my life. And nobody can love me like Jesus can. And you know I get so lonesome sometimes with nobody to talk to. But you know Jesus talks to me all day long. That's right. And I just love him and I just want to give him glory this morning. And I thank him that he's healing me day by day. And I want to give him all the praise and glory and honor for who he is. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know what, Gail? Your, your testimony is enough for us. Your testimony is enough for us. That's a blessing to us. Amen. Well, I'm going to stand up and thank God for another day. Thank you for taking care of us during the week and, and uh, watching over our family and keeping them safe. And, and uh, we had a we had a little miss up miss ha miss half Friday night. Uh, Bill picked me up from work. And we were going to. Uh, go out and eat some supper and stuff and we just had our truck worked on and, uh, so he, he thought well I'll just take the truck in and, and try it out after having it worked on so we got he came and got me and we started down the road and went over Gulf Mountain and the lights started going out and well wonder what's wrong <laughs> so we went on down the road and then the truck started cutting out and stuff. So finally it stopped. Oh, <laughs> and we were right in the middle of nowhere, no place around where we could go use the phone. And I'm not allowed to take my phone into my work any longer, so I left it in the car. So we didn't have a cell phone with us either. 
But at least, you know, it wasn't cold. Yeah. And, uh, so we, we said, well, what are we going to do now? So Bill got out and he opened up the hood and wasn't anything he could do. So he said, well, I guess we'll just walk. So we got out and we started walking. And I uh, couldn't see, didn't have a flashlight or anything. <laughs> walking in the dark down the highway, cars flying by and stuff. But you know what? The Lord was yeah. so good to us. Amen. Because, you know, he... He, 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 we didn't get hit by car. It wasn't cold that night. And you know, the first building that we came to was a garage. And, and, it, were, were, and it was open, and the mechanics were there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so they uh, took a, a battery down there and got the truck started and brought the truck down there, and they worked on it. And we, could, and we called uh, Troy. <laughs> But uh, there wasn't anyone home, so we called Missy, and so they came after us, and and uh, we we got along just fine. But you know what? The Lord was watching out after us, Amen. and I just want to praise Him and yes. thank yeah. Him for yes. watching after us and taking care of us and keeping us safe. Amen. Uh, my girlfriend and I were talking the other night, and she said, "You know, the Lord is good." She said, uh, and I said, "I know." I said, "He's." He's, he, he, everything that's good in this world comes from God. Amen. And um, anything, anything that we have for anything good that comes our way, it all comes from God. And I just want to praise his name and, and thank him for everything that he does. Amen. My turn. You know, the Lord's blessed me over the years. I've had nothing but seven miracles in my life. Uh, so many different things that it's hard for me to explain all of them. I'm so thankful for what he does for me. And you know, every time I turn around, the Lord's doing something else for me. Sure. He's watching over you. He watches over you, his own. Amen. And you know, the more you bless him, the more he's going to watch over you That's and true. take care of you. And that, that means a big big thing in our lives. I'll tell you, we, we, we strive from day to day uh, with problems. Everybody has problems. Uh, personality clashes and whatever. And my wife's had a little problem at work, but uh, she's already worked it out, you know. But it seems like it's, it's everything. Every other day there's some kind of a little problem. And you just take it to the Lord and, and He takes care of it. Amen. And that's all there is to it. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this, for this church. I'm thankful for what it stands for, and how how we uh, get praised here. We praise the Lord. And there, there don't have to be very many of us here. Bless Jesus. I, I'm tickled to death with the amount of people here, and and uh, we we like to have more. We like to have the pews full, but that's all right. The Lord will come, and and time will come when we probably can't even see, hear ourselves thinking here. Going to be so busy, but. Uh, you pray for it. Pray for our families. Pray for our church. And uh, the Lord bless us. Bless us right on. Amen. Well, I'm going to stand up and <laughs> bless you, honey. Um, thank the Lord. He uh, took care of an issue that, um, Amen. that we thought could be a problem. I had found a lump someplace where it shouldn't have been. And, and the doctors um, you know, check it out and there's it's that's nothing to be concerned with. It's um, just tissue that's just lumpy tissue and I just want to thank you for that. Sure. For taking Lord care of, of me and for taking care of my family and I just want to praise you. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for taking care of mom and dad. I'm, I'm thankful for that. It made me think of the scripture and praise the Lord. What a blessing it is that the Lord took care of mom and dad while they were walking on the side of the road. And the Lord brought scripture to my heart. It says here in John 11 that his disciples said to Jesus, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. But the Bible says in 1 John, the Bible says that if we walk in the light, as he is in the Amen. light, 
We have fellowship one Amen. with another, and the blood of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us Amen. from all sin. He, the psalmist said that Thy Word is a light unto my path Amen. and a lamp unto my feet. Uh, we have a song uh, number two in the blue book there called Heavenly Sunlight. And uh, could, could we sing that? <coughs> yeah, number two. Robin's got the music there for us. I mean, you, you get 
down, you're down. But you know, look what Jesus went through. Amen. You know, we 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 got we, nothing we would ever go through in this world could ever compare to what our Savior went through. The pain that He suffered for each and every one of us. And you know, when I'm in pain. I think of my Savior, what he went through. That's right. yeah. And I say, thank you, Lord, for this pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that I can tolerate this pain. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, I know you're going to fix this pain. And Because there's nothing too hard for my God. That's right. Yeah. And I've got uh, another sister about lost on the 14th of December. She's got COPD. Uh, they even brought in the paddles and everything. And I have been praying hard for her. And the whole family has. And... Uh, she didn't even have to go to the hospital, and she had went away from the Lord a little bit, and we went to see her uh, the week before that, and I asked my sister, I said, are you still giving Jesus two kisses? She said, no, I haven't. And I said, well, you told me you always give him two kisses. She said, I always do. I'm going to have to start doing that. <laughs> and so finally, Bob and I, and I said, you know what? I felt led to pray before I go. And so we prayed there and left. And then it was on the 14th that that happened. And, if they, and then on Christmas Day, her and my sister hadn't spoke for so long. And lo and behold, if, if she didn't call my sister up and wish her a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and told her she loved her, would she please come and see her? Yeah. So he's a wonderful God, and you know, yes, he uh, he's, he, everybody wants everything instant. Right now, microwave, McDonald's, boom, 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 boom. Right. But you know, we have to be patient. We have to be patient with one another. We have to be, be patient with God. God yeah. hears us when we pray. Yes, he does. And you've got to be careful what you ask for. Mm -hmm. And just as I look at that picture every time I'm in here, I think that about the door knob missing there. You have to open up from the inside. And Amen. Jesus in your heart. He's standing there knocking. And you know, a lot of people go to church and, and everything, but they're not praising the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And you know, that's what I come to church, is to learn more about Jesus, to learn yes. more about my heavenly Father, to get that spiritual food, that <laughs> manna. I need it. I got yes. to have it. Without yeah. it, I'll surely die. And so my son almost came this morning. I told him about you all learning all the books in the Bible and could say them. And he was just thrilled with the whole idea. <laughs> and he's wanting to come and see that. So Amen. maybe in the next couple of weeks, the Lord will give him a chance and he will come. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God that he gave me children, that he gave me grandchildren. Yes. And that he did put me and Bob back together. It, it's, it's, it's just amazing how God works. And, you know, you got to let go and let God. So, and I have prayed, matter of fact, I prayed for Phyllis and Bill. And I said, Lord, I don't know what's wrong. And I began to pray. And that, so finally, I prayed for everybody in this church. Amen. 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 And one evening, and I said, well, Lord, and he prayed for Sandy, prayed for Bill. And, and I said, well, Lord, but anyway, uh, I just want y'all to know that I love you. Bless but you, you know, you. Amen. our love for each other is nothing compared to what Jesus feels for Amen. us. And how much he does that. So, I just want to tell you all this morning, and I'm so glad to hear your good news this morning. Yes. Bless the Lord. I wasn't so lucky. And I didn't have Jesus to help me. Mm -hmm. But you know, even if sickness comes and things like that happen, Jesus is still there. Yes, he is. He goes through the fire. He goes through the flood. He goes everywhere you go. And sometimes we have to encourage ourselves, and there's no one else to encourage us. We have to encourage ourselves. David did, little David did. Amen. So, you know, I, I love God's Word. I love being in it. I, I could sit 24 7 and talk about my Savior and my Heavenly Father and all the prophets and everything in the Bible. And, and I love God's Word. Yeah. And I, I want to be faithful until the end. And I want to make heaven my home. That's my destination, is to make it home. So y'all just pray for me. Bless your heart. Continue to remember the Shingleton family. Oh, 
Our most kind of Heavenly Father, we'll thank the Lord for this day you give us. We'll thank you for the many blessings you have sowed upon us, Lord. God bless your children. God bless your church, Lord. God bless each and every person here as they strive to be better people, better Christians. Help us, Lord, now as we go your way, study the Word, be a good person. Help us to be better Christians, Lord. Lord, and Lord, to listen to the Word. You're going to bring forth this morning, Lord, the bread of life, Lord, the living water that comes from the name. Thank you, Lord, for this time you give us together to be able to study the word. Thank you for the word, Lord, that they begin to hear this morning. Father God, God bless them and their children. Lord, in spirit, Lord, or just cast down, Lord, just help them this morning to the word, Father God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God, and thank you, Lord, for helping Bill and Phyllis. Thank you, Lord. For helping me. Thank you for helping the children here, Lord. They are such a blessing, Lord. And how I, I love these children. And dear God, children are a gift and a blessing. And we thank you for each and every child, Lord, that you put up on this face of this earth. God, be with those in third world countries, Lord, that have no food today. Dear Lord, let us be more like you. And let us, like ourselves, take self out of the way, Lord, so that we can see you, Father God. Help us, Lord, to walk in the Spirit, Lord, to walk in love, Lord. And, Lord, just give us the strength, Lord, to walk the extra mile. That, Lord, if someone asks for our coat, Lord, that we give them our cloak also. Bless Brother Jim, Lord, Estes, Lord. I miss him telling us about his, about Jerusalem, Lord. Just help him, Lord. I miss that in his little church. And help Anna Jean, Lord, her neck, dear God. And I know you can heal her, Lord. Dear God, there's nothing you can't do. And God, I know you hear our prayers when we pray. And I know, Lord, you see our tears when we cry. Lord, you see our laying down. You see our getting up. You see us when we're all alone. You see us when we're with people. You're up and it. All we see, all we know. God, we're so grateful to you this morning for saving each and every one of us. God, we thank you for your only begotten Son. And we thank you, Jesus, you went there willingly, Lord. Lord, give us the strength to just endure, Lord, and to tell the world to repent. Jesus is coming soon. Repent. Jesus is coming soon. And very soon. And thank you, Lord, for your word. It is true. Let your word be true in every man alive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We sing 69 in the blue book.
a blessing last week. Your son got up there and teach like he's always done it. That's the Lord, <laughs> yeah. you know. That's it was so a blessing crazy. to us. I actually saw it on the the video that Troy had taken. Yeah. He was good. All right. Now um start out with our memory verse today. Our memory verse is, we're going to study it for several weeks. We're going to actually memorize it. Um, and it's going to be, I want you to go ahead and open your Bibles to John chapter 20. Verses 30 and 31. It's going to be a little bit bigger of a chunk, but we're going to take a few weeks to memorize it. Really? John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Verses 30 and 31. Chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. It's at the very end of the chapter, the last two verses. Verse 30. Rusty, why don't you read this for us? Okay. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ of the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Okay. Now what kind of signs do you guys see when you're out on the road? There's stop signs, there's yield signs, mm -hmm. speed limit signs. Um, there are all kinds of signs out there, and those... No turns in the left lane, or no trucks in the no trucks in the left lane. <laughs> yeah. Well, those signs are there to give us direction, to show us, um, you know, so that we don't we're not hurting each other out there. They keep us going in the right direction. They, um, you know, tell us when to stop. They tell us where to go, how fast to go, and those are all to protect us, right? Um, well, the Bible also has, there are signs all in the Bible, mm -hmm. and those are to give us direction also. Um, well, this month, or for a few weeks, we're going to study the different signs that Jesus gave us to show us that he is God's son. Amen. Okay? Um, now, I've got a cup of water here. This is a cup of water. Y'all believe this is a cup of water, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what if I told you that I could change this water into Pepsi? Would you believe me? Why? Why wouldn't you believe me? Right. I'm just a person. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't change this water into anything. It's going to stay water. Um, now what? Let's just pretend that I did. 
okay, that I changed it into Pepsi. Would you believe me then? You would believe me then if I did. Let's just pretend. I can't do it. But if I did it, you would believe me then. All right? That's how our human nature is. is we, we need to see. We need to, to have proof, you know, because people can talk all day long and tell you all kinds of things that they can do, but it's hard to believe that people, that some people can actually do the things that they say that they can. Well, for the next few weeks, we're going to grow in our faith. Amen. Okay? The word faith is used to describe our belief that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, what is faith? What is faith? Believing. Believing. Anybody else have an idea what faith is? Well, let's look at, um, turn to Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to find out what faith is. Faith is a substance not yet seen but hopeful. Yeah. Chapter 11? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pay attention when we're reading so that you guys can answer your questions, okay? Chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Okay? Now listen to the questions, and I want you guys to see if you can find the answers to these questions while we're reading. Okay, the first one is, what was the first miracle Jesus performed? Okay? That's right. All right? Did the governor of the feast like the wine? Yes. It was good, wasn't it? Why? How do you know that? Because he tasted it. He tasted it and he was like, um, this wine is better than the wine that we had before. So who changed the situation at the wedding? Jesus did. Um, who believed in Jesus? The king. The, the prince. Well, the, the disciples were there. Yeah. Okay. And then why did they put their faith in Jesus? Okay. Right. Okay. And now we're going to read. Um, mm -hmm. So he's going to have the next question. Yeah, we're going to oh. we're going to look at them again. What? John, chapter two. John chapter two. And Ray Ray, you read verses one through four. Jesus. And both Jesus was 
called? Called and his disciples to the marriage and when they wanted wanted wine, wine the mother of Jesus saith unto him they have no wine Jesus saith unto here woman that have what have I what have I I do to I do. too do with the my 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 hour my hour is not yet come okay so they're at a marriage at a at a um a wedding and um they've run out of wine so Jesus go or Mary goes to Jesus and tells him, you know, they have the wine, they're out of wine. Now you read from verses five through the end of verse eight. <coughs> start 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 at five and read all the way through the end of verse eight. <coughs> You you finish reading through the end of verse eleven. Okay. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him. Every man at the bright beginning. beginning doeth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, and then that which is worse, but thou get the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifest, manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Okay. All right, so what was the first miracle he performed? Wine. Turn the water into wine. Okay, the governor of the feast liked the wine. What did he say when he, when he tasted the wine? He said, um, every man at the beginning, at other weddings, every man at the beginning does set forth the good wine. They give the... Um, they give the good wine at first, and then later they give the cheaper wine. Well, he's saying, well, you've given us the cheaper wine first, and now you've given us the really good wine. This is good stuff. Um, who changed the situation at the wedding? Jesus. Jesus did. Now, was Jesus, when he did this, was he just showing off? Was he just saying, look at how, how powerful I am. I'm going to change this water into wine. He wasn't, was he? What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
for him? Yeah. He did it to increase their faith because he knew that, um, you know, he knows how we are, that we, we need to, to see things to believe them. But we can believe in, in the Bible that he's given us that he, these are the, the signs and the wonders that he has given us so, to increase our faith, to make us believe. Um, for the disciples, this miracle was the first sign that showed that Jesus is, is the Son of God. And their faith in him grew because of this. Why do we need to know about this miracle? Why do we need to know that about it? Right, right. Um, and now our memory verse, again, is John chapter 20. And we're going to be reflecting back on this for a few weeks. So we're going to get to know it really well. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book there are many more miracles that he performed that are not in the Bible but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name so that's why we have the Bible that's why he um, you know, told us about the miracles that he has done so that, so that we would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing we might have life through his name. So that's why he did um, miracles. How is this, how is the story today, how is that a miraculous sign? What's so miraculous about it? <laughs> Transformed it from water into water. And nobody else can do it, can they? Right. Nobody else, who knew, no, no, no human can do that. Um, does this story help us to believe that Jesus is the Son of God? It does. Um, who else could change water to wine? Nope. So could I do it? Could I change the water into Pepsi? Right. I can't. Um, why is it important to believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Why do you need to why do you need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God? That way we can go to heaven. Right. That way we have life. We'll, we'll be saved. We won't perish. We won't go to hell. Faith is believing that Jesus can change things and can improve circumstances. How did Jesus improve the circumstances at the wedding? How did he change things? They were out of wine. And we build faith by reading about the miracles that Jesus performed when he was a man. We also build faith by seeing Jesus work in our lives and with and in the lives of, of people around us. Um, he performed a miracle for me. Um, you know, this week, I, I believe that he performed a miracle in me. Um, we have to learn to look for Jesus. There, there are things he's protecting us when we don't even know he's protecting us. Yeah. He's performing miracles that we don't even see. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to learn to look for him and to watch for miracles. He's with us and he blesses us every day. We build faith in Jesus by looking at the signs of his love and care in our own lives. If Jesus has the power to change water into wine in an instant, what does Jesus have the power to do in your life? What can he do in your life? Hmm? Well, yeah, he, he, can, he can change things. Right, he can change things. Right, he can change little things, and he can change big things. He bless, he blesses us every single day. Um, we're going to use these sheets. You guys are going to use these at home. 
and you're going to use these sheets this week to look for, um, to write down how Jesus um, is changing things in your life, okay? You're going to look for evidence of Jesus in your life. It would be something good that happens to you, or maybe it's some kind of behavior, a good behavior that normally you wouldn't show. Um, it may be an answer to prayer. It could be an act of kindness that someone shows to you, or an encouraging letter or a phone call from somebody. If you find yourself being more patient than you normally are, that is Jesus. That's evidence of Jesus in your life. If you feel calmer about something that normally you'd be anxious about, you know, that's evidence of Jesus in your life. Um, and then next week, you're going to bring these back and you're going to tell us about things, about changes that have happened to you every day. I want you to look and I want you to think, okay, what is something that Jesus has changed in me today? And I don't mean something physical, something we can see, but I mean something spiritual, something inside of you. I want you to, to, to you know, to look for changes. I want you to look for changes. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I want you to, to look for Jesus. I want you to, to ask Jesus to, um, you know, to help you with something that you're struggling with. What is something, any, any of you want to share something that you would like to change about yourself? Something spiritual, something inside? Anything? Well, I would like for Jesus to help me to be um, more uh, patient but I don't want to pray for patience. I want to, um, I want to look for um, evidence of Him helping me to be more patient. Um, any of you have something that you wanna that you wanna want Jesus to change in you? Anybody? How about any of you all? Is there something that you would like for Jesus to help you change? Smoking. Oh, Smoking. Well, he can do that. Amen. Well, he did it for me. And I didn't think it would ever happen. Did you? Did you think it would ever happen? I mean, I had told him 20 years ago that I was going to quit smoking, but, um, you know, I had I had quit dozens of times. You should, I should have been really good at it because I had done it so much. But I was not good at it at all. But he made that change. I want him to help me to be, um, to not look so far ahead. You know, I was telling them earlier that I, I get discouraged with practicing piano because I want to look so far ahead that I think that's unattainable. That I can't get to how, remember how Tina, how good Tina is playing the piano? I want to be as good as Tina is. But I can't be as good as Tina is, you know, with a week of practice, she played, has played piano all her life. Mm -hmm. She started when she was seven years old, and she practiced every day, every day. She didn't become that way overnight. And I want to be, that's what I want to be patient about, <clears throat> is to, um, you know, to not look so far ahead and, get, and let that discourage me. But think of what I can do right now. What can I do today to help me get that one step closer? I don't want to just stay where I am and not practice at all, but I need to at least take a little tiny step today. And then tomorrow, I'll take another tiny step. Amen. And then the next day, I'll take another tiny step. And eventually, I'll get there. Yeah. But if I want to stay here, I'm never going to get there. Never. Ever. Ever. Get to the door. Yeah. I'm not going to get to the door. I'm not going to get anywhere unless I practice. <coughs> So I want Jesus to help me change that about myself, to, to um, you know, set little goals and try to work towards that one little goal and, you know, take that little tiny step. Um, so I want you guys to look for Jesus this week and then come back and you're going to tell us, okay? Now, I can't look for him in you. I might notice something, but I want you to look for him. I want you to look for him and you to look for him. And I'm going to be looking for him too. Okay? Me too. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now we're going to sing.
sing. I had a couple other songs. Um, do y'all remember the song Stand Up and Shout It? Remember at Hazel Creek? Troy does. Stand up and shout it if you love my Jesus. Stand up and shout it if you love my Lord. I want to know, oh, I want to know if you love my Lord. And then we'd sit down and say, sit down and whisper if you love my Jesus. Sit down and whisper if you love my Lord. I want to know, oh, I want to know if you love my Lord. And then we'd get back up and we'd say, stand up and shout it if you love my Jesus. Stand up and shout it if you love my Lord. I want to know, oh, I want to know if you love my Lord. Raise your hands and praise Him if you love my Jesus. Raise your hands and praise Him if you love my Lord. I want to know, oh, I want to know if you love my Lord. That's not right. Okay, you guys want to sing a couple more songs? <coughs> chart and then when you fill it up then we'll have some kind of reward. Okay? That John chapter 20 that we were doing we're gonna, we're gonna work on it. We're gonna learn it after a few weeks and we'll get a prize. Right now we'll do the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nathan, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, First and second Peter, first John, second John, third John, June and Revelation. Good job. <clears throat> How about we sing he's got the whole world in his hands? That's what we need to believe, don't we? When we're having trouble with something, we need to believe that he's got the whole world in his hands. <coughs> He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the whole. 
He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. What else shall I say?
the preacher at first. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be saved? Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, open your Bible this morning uh, to John chapter 5. If you don't have a Bible, I believe there's some in the pews there. and uh, It's good to bring your Bible to church. Amen. 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 I, I'm thankful. Amen for the Word of God. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 like, uh, I like looking at the Scriptures. And interpreting the scriptures with scripture. Uh, the scriptures will uh, confirm themselves. God's word confirms itself. And I'm thankful for that this morning. And uh, I'm thankful uh, for the lesson that the Lord gave us about the first miracle that Jesus did. And, and uh, Jesus told his mother that his hour had not yet come. And uh, uh, Jesus didn't, uh, you know, he didn't want to draw attention to himself. But his, his goal uh, was to uh, uh, help his disciples increase their faith. And, and I'm glad for the things that the Lord does. And the Lord does for us every day. You know, if you look for God, you'll find God. Amen. 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 If, you, if you look for the Lord uh, working in your life, you can see him. And uh, I'm so glad for that. I'm glad that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. The evidence of things not seen. There's evidence of God working in our life. Amen. There's evidence. You can't see love, but you can see the evidence of love. Amen. amen. You can see the evidence of love. Uh, love shows. If you have love in your heart, amen, you can't hold it in. You, it just shows and it comes amen. forth. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad for that this morning. So look with me if you would at uh, John chapter 5. And we're going to turn to a few different scriptures in our Bible. And uh, I'm thankful Amen. That the Lord has given us eyes uh, to see, hearts to understand, and uh, and His Spirit to reveal His Word. And, and I'm thankful for that this morning. Uh, so the Bible tells us in John chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, that after this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of infinite folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I am coming another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Let us pray before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord Almighty, what a privilege it is this morning, Father, to bow before you. Lord God, we're so thankful that, dear Lord, you never get weary of us calling out to you. You never get weary of us coming to you, Father, Lord, and asking for your help. And Lord God, I just humbly look to you this morning, dear Lord God, is the only way I know how, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to Lord God, call unto you, Father God, Lord, and you told us in your word that if we would call unto you, that you would answer us. And Father God Almighty, that you would show us great and mighty things that we know not. And Father, I pray this morning, open our hearts, open our minds, open our souls and pour in your spirit, Father God. Lord God, that we might show forth, dear Lord God, your praises and your glory. Father God, Lord, that we might draw closer to you. 
And Father God, Lord, we'll give you all the praise, Father God, Lord, for in us we can do nothing, but through Christ our Savior we can do all things. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name, and amen. Amen. We see here in John chapter 5 uh, that uh, uh, the Bible tells us that there was a feast and that there was at, the, at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. Now the sheep market is the sheep gate. Uh, it's, a, it's a gate where they would bring the sheep in for the sacrifice. And uh, the Bible says here that it's called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. And that word Bethesda in the Hebrew means house of mercy. And I want to welcome you this morning to the house of mercy. Because that's what this place is. Yes. This is a place of healing. Amen. This is a place of help. This is a sanctuary. Amen. Yes. That's what the house of God is Amen. for. Amen. Amen. It's a place to come and to be healed. A place to come and to find help. A sanctuary from the sins and the deceit and the cares of this world. Yes. You can come. Amen to the house of God. Amen. And amen, you can find sanctuary here. That's what it's about, amen. Yes, it's coming to glorify God, amen. Yes, and to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, yes. amen. amen. It's a blessing, amen, and to, to be able to come and to, to dwell on the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. To dwell on the goodness of His Word. As our sister said earlier, that the Lord inhabits the praises of Israel, amen. Hallelujah, I came to praise the Lord amen. this morning. And to give glory to his name. Uh, that's what the word Bethesda means. Having five porches. And that uh, number five is the number for grace. Amen. And aren't you glad. Amen. For grace this amen. morning. Because grace is unmerited favor. That I couldn't earn it. I couldn't buy it. Uh, uh, brother. But it's given. Amen. Hallelujah. By God. I'm so glad. For the grace of God this morning. Uh, brother. For it's by grace are we saved. Through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Amen. And there's no amount of works that a man can do to equal up to God. There's no amount of things that a man can do in his own righteousness to be saved. Amen. But it's a gift of God Almighty. The wages of sin, the wages that we earn is death. Amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. It's a gift. Amen. That comes from God. The Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And now the Bible says here that an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. A lot of folks would like to explain away the works of God as natural occurrences. A lot of folks would like to say, well, that man was healed by that medicine. Or that man was healed by the surgery that that doctor did. But I want you to know, brother, that one man can take a medicine and another man can take the same medicine and one will be healed and the other will not. It's God that does the healing. And a doctor can do a surgery on one man and he's ever so diligent do the very same surgery on another man. One man will live and another man will pass on. It's God who gives life. Amen. I declare unto you today because in Him was life and the life was the light of men. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Jesus is that life. Amen. Amen. He breathed into the dust of the earth and man became a living Amen. soul. Amen. Amen. God. It's God who gives life. It's God. Amen. That, uh, that, that stirred this water. It wasn't that the water... Uh, oh, the man may test the, the water of some pool, may test the water somewhere and say, well, uh, it has nutrients or it has minerals in it. And it very well may or it very well does. Uh, but glory be to God, it's God that does the healing. The Bible says that an angel went down mm -hmm. and that he troubled this water. Right. And the Bible says here that he went down a certain season into the pool. And glory be to God. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Genesis how that the Spirit of God would move upon the face of the waters and that the God said, let there be light. Amen. Amen. God, hallelujah, uh, will use things uh, to, to heal. God will use things to help those that are in need. God will use vessels. Amen. And here God was choosing this pool of water to heal uh, the great multitude of impotent folk. Blind, halt, withered, and they waited for the moving of the water. There was a great multitude because evidently other folks had been healed. There had been times that people had came to this pool and they had been healed. And so they would come and they would wait for the moving of the water. 
And they were waiting for the, this season, this certain time to take place uh, so that they could, could step in and that they could be healed of whatsoever, of whatsoever the Bible says disease, any disease. Amen. Hallelujah. It didn't just say certain disease. It didn't just say skin diseases. It said whatsoever disease he had. That's how I know it was of God. Amen. Because God can do all things, all things. Are possible with God. Amen. All things. Yes. Hallelujah. It just took these folks had faith. They had faith that the water would be troubled again. That they had faith that uh, that they could be healed. That if they were able to step into the pool. But glory be to God. The Bible says that it happened a certain season. It wasn't like this all the time. It was a certain season. Listen, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, listen, uh, lost folks, uh, it is important that we realize that we recognize the times uh, and the season. Jesus said, uh, you can discern the sky and that it's going to be red uh, and that there's going to be foul weather tomorrow, but you can't tell the times or the seasons uh, of the Son of God. Uh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. I tell you that Jesus uh, has came to this world and proclaimed His gospel. Amen. To every thing there is a season uh, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Right. To everything yes. is what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season. Right. And glory be to God, uh, uh, there was a season of darkness in between uh, the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew. 400 years there was no prophet. Amen. There was no prophecy given. It was a time of darkness. It was a season of darkness. But hallelujah, the day spring on high. Hallelujah. Visit us. Hallelujah. And glory be to God. His light shine. Hallelujah. And the season changed. Amen. Amen. There's seasons that happen in this world. And glory be to God, there's seasons that happen in the creation that God has given us. Uh, and brother, there are spiritual seasons that this world uh, goes through. Uh, and brother, now, uh, now uh, is the season of salvation. Amen. Now uh, is the season of God's word. For he saith, I've heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have us occurred thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the time to be saved. Yeah, hallelujah. Now is the time. Amen. A lot of folks like to put things off. And they say, well, I'm going to wait for a more convenient time. Look with me in Acts chapter 24. Paul had been put in jail for preaching the gospel. They called him a pest. He said, he said this man's a pestilent. Pestilent man. And they put him in jail and they began to bring false accusations against Paul. And the Bible said here that, uh, uh, that after the case was adjourned, in Acts chapter 24, beginning at verse 24, that after certain days, Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess. And he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now Paul is imprisoned. Paul is, 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 has been, been taken captive. Now Paul could be sitting back complaining, saying, look, I was doing good. I was doing what God called me to do. And now I'm suffering for it. And he could go run on complain. But no, Paul said, glory be to God. I'm going to use this as an opportunity. Amen. My glory be to God. Hallelujah. What we look at is problems. God says it's an opportunity yes, to show his glory and to show his power. And to show his mercy. Hallelujah. What we see is a great problem. God says, what a great opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, uh, that as he reasoned of righteousness. Woo, isn't it good to be righteous? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Righteousness, temperance, judgment to come. Felix trembled. This man was trembling. He heard of the righteousness of Jesus, the righteousness of God, the temperance, the forbearance, the long suffering of God. Amen. And the judgment to come upon those that have rejected Jesus Christ. He that believeth on the Son of God hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God Amen. abideth on him. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says that he said, Felix trembled and he trembled and he answered, Go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season, I'll call for thee. He says, when things are right in my life, then I'll call for you. Look, brother, don't count on it. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Amen. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're in the house of mercy today. Amen. Glory be to God. What you have is right now. Amen. That's what it said there in Hebrews 11, 1, didn't it? It said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the, and the evidence of things not seen. The things, glory be to God, that God has in store for you now today. You're not guaranteed to tomorrow on this earth. That's right. But glory be to God, you can call unto Him now. God said, I've heard thee in a separate time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to be saved. Not in another season, brother. Glory be to God, when Jesus came the first time, Jesus came as a babe in a manger. Oh, I'm so glad to think as my Savior, hallelujah, was in a feeding trough, amen, uh, and He was called the bread of life, amen, uh, and that He was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, uh, amen. Aren't you glad, hallelujah, uh, that Jesus was that meat offering, uh, amen, that the Bible tells us in uh, the book of Leviticus, the meat is the ground up flour, amen, how Jesus uh, suffered and was ground, amen, uh, suffered our afflictions and our sins and was an offering unto God for our sin and our salvation. Amen. Jesus was born in a manger and how that Jesus came as a babe and He grew up as a young boy and glory be to God was wise and He taught and glory be to God the theologians and the doctors and the lawyers marveled at His wisdom. Uh, even His parents marveled when He was lost uh, and they said to Him uh, uh, well, where did you go? And He said wished ye not that I must be about my Father's business. Amen. Uh, how that Jesus had the wisdom and had the, had the glory of God was filled with the knowledge knowledge of God and how that Jesus came for salvation and today truly is the day of salvation. Our Lord has come and proclaimed the good news as cold waters to a thirsty soul so as good news from a far country Jesus has came and proclaimed the good news, salvation and eternal life to whosoever will. Hallelujah. Jesus has given it for whosoever will. Yes. But brother, there's coming a time and it's called the day of the Lord. Amen. It's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Uh, wherefore, the elements shall pass away with fervent heat uh, and with a great noise. I tell you uh, that the day of the Lord is coming. Hallelujah. He's not coming as a baby in a manger. Right. He's not coming as a Savior hanging upon a cross. But He will come as King of kings uh, and Lord of lords. Uh, and I tell you, brother, when a king comes, uh, brother, He's not coming in peace. Uh, he's going to tread the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath uh, of God Almighty. Amen. Uh, and the heavenly army of His saints will follow Him. Glory be to God. I look forward to the day of the Lord. But now is the accepted time of salvation. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't you wait. Don't you let the devil deceive you into waiting for a convenient season. As he did Felix. Felix was at the point of salvation. He trembled. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He trembled at the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, but instead, uh, He sent the gospel away. He sent uh, and He turned away from it. Brother, that is the crucial point. The crucial point when glory be to God, the Holy Spirit deals with your heart because of a sin in your life, uh, because of an infirmity in your life, uh, because of your lack of salvation. Uh, brother, hearken unto the voice of the Lord uh, and allow God to draw you to His precious throne and cross. Amen. And that glory be to God that you would be saved and be healed of whatsoever infirmity, Amen. whatsoever disease you have. The Bible said right there that the angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water and whosoever, aren't you glad to be a whosoever? Amen. 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 Whosoever then after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. What a blessing. What a blessing. Here's a man 38 years. You know, 
The Bible could have told us about a man that had an infirmity a week or a day or a month or a year. But here's something that to man looks hard. Amen? To man it looks hard. It looks like a mountain. Amen? That's right. Hallelujah. What the Bible say about the mountains? Jesus said if we had faith as the size of a grain of mustard seed. We can move that mountain. Glory be to Who art thou, old mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Amen. 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 How glory. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible tells us here uh, that there's a man that had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. The Bible goes on and it tells us it doesn't just say that he just had any old infirmity. The Bible says that Jesus saw him lie. So Jesus, yeah. Jesus sees the man laying there. The man probably had palsy. The man probably was crippled and couldn't walk. And here he was just lying there. And the Bible tells us here that, uh, that Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Yeah. Look with me if you would at 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. I want you to know the ministry of my Lord Jesus Christ. That each and every moment that he walked this earth, he was not idle. Jesus, amen, as he went throughout the shores of Galilee, as he went throughout the town of Capernaum, uh, as Jesus went throughout Jerusalem, uh, Jesus was looking for those uh, who needed help. Uh, he was looking for those, uh, amen, uh, who, who, who were uh, helpless in themselves uh, and needed a Savior. I tell you that he has not changed, that Jesus is still the very same today. The Bible tells us there in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9 that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God's eyes, amen, look throughout this entire world. God is constantly searching for someone, someone who cannot help themselves. Because if you can help yourself, God expects you to do it. Amen. Amen. But if you can't help yourself, I tell you that Jesus, amen. Jesus, where you can't, God will. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, when the leper came down, hallelujah, when Jesus came down from the Sermon on the Mount and the leper came to meet him and he said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus said, I will hallelujah. be thou clean. Praise be clean. And he was cleansed Amen. from his leprosy. There wasn't no cure, brother. Jesus cleansed him immediately. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible said that Jesus saw this man. Jesus was always looking for someone that he could help. Yes. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All, every one. And there wasn't one that Jesus came to and he couldn't heal. Amen. You show me that there was one. Every one that he came to that would believe on him, that would trust him, he healed them. And glory be to God. He has the same power today. Jesus Christ the same today. Yesterday and forever. He said, behold, I change not. He is the same Jesus. That same This same Jesus whom you've seen go in like manner shall return. Amen. Glory be to God. The very same. He's coming back in power and great glory. The Bible said that Jesus saw this man. He was looking for someone. And he knew that he had been a long time in that case. He asked him, he said, Wilt thou be made whole? Jesus, Jesus knew that this man wanted to be made whole. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see, he wanted, to, he wanted the man to see the glory of God. Yes. He wanted this man to see the power of God Almighty. Can you see when God blesses you? It's a blessing, brother, to wake up with breath in my lungs Amen. in the morning. It, it is a miracle to That's me. Right, the gift of life is a pure Amen. miracle. Yes, yes. It is a pure... I mean, to look at this inanimate object, to look at an inanimate object, and brother, it just sits there, it does nothing, but God puts in us a heart. 
And God puts in us a mind and a soul. And God puts His Spirit in us. And God allows us to read His Word and to feel His Spirit and to know His presence and His salvation. But brother, it's a miracle to me. It's a miracle every day. Amen. Glory be to God. Jesus said to him, Wilt thou be made whole? And you see how the man answers. He doesn't complain or grumble in a hateful manner, but he just simply says, Sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. We see this man 38 years, my brother. 38 years he had been coming and he had been wanting to be made whole. And this man wasn't able to step down into the pool. Brother, I see the same thing in today's society. I go to the grocery store and I see every car I possibly can packed all the way towards the front of the parking lot. I see people park in handicap parking spots. Uh, and brother, I see them, they'll pull out their handicap sign and put it on there and they just walk just as fine and healthy as can possibly be right in there. And that same thing was going on today here at the pool of Bethesda. There was so many people. There was folks that maybe have only been sick a day. Right. Only a day, maybe only a week, maybe only a month. The only thing they cared about was themselves and they got all the way up there to the front as fast as they possibly could to step down into that pool. Yeah. And here lays this man, 30 and 8 years, and when the water's troubled, maybe he gets his old stick and he begins trying to limp, trying to drag his leg. Or maybe he can't even do that. Maybe he's got to get on, maybe he's on the ground and he's got to drag himself. He's got to drag his legs across the ground trying to get to the pool before somebody else does so that he can be healed and he tries to get in there but somebody else steps down before he does because of all they can think of as themselves and here's this man 38 years 38 years in that case he can't help himself 38 years he had struggled 38 years he hadn't been able to walk. He couldn't work. He couldn't have a family. Oh, brother, I believe he had a right to grumble and complain. Yeah. But yet he simply, humbly and respectfully says, Sir, I have no man to help me. Someone always comes before me. Psalm 142 says, I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Brother, there's people today that are at their homes this morning. Yeah. They're in complete misery. There are people today that won't even come to darken the, the door of a church house because they've been offended, they've been hurt. Somebody has out of selfishness and self-righteousness hurt them. And glory be to God, they won't even darken the church door. And oh, brother, oh, how we need to tell the world who Jesus really is, amen. That hallelujah, he's not some religious, self-centered, self-serving, self-seeking. He came and gave himself that the world might be saved. That is my Jesus. That is my Savior. That is my God. He loves, hallelujah, each and every one, whosoever will. Amen. Glory be to God. I praise God for His holy name this morning. The Bible tells us there in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus was telling His disciples, there was many, glory be to God, His disciples wondered about being saved. The Bible said that Peter asked Him, said, Lord, who can be saved? Jesus told him it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Peter said, uh, Lord, who can be saved? And the Bible said that Peter told him, he said, uh, that Jesus answered him and he said, Peter said, Lord, we have forsaken all. We've forsaken our houses. We've forsaken our families. Jesus said, uh, he that forsakes these things, he says, uh, uh, brother, he's going to be given much more in the kingdom to come. Uh, uh, glory be to God. He's going to be given uh, uh, much more in these things. Uh, he says, everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land 
for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit life everlasting. But he says, but many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. You say, Brother Troy, how's this have to go with that? With the man at the pool of Bethesda, here he was all the way in the back, and nobody would help him. Here he was, that he, he would have tried it for 38 years, nobody would help the man into the pool. But here came Jesus. And Jesus said to him, Take up your bed and walk. The spoken, infallible word of God. Amen. Brother, it didn't. He just simply, he simply needed the Lord's help. Do you need the Lord's help this morning? You see, there's many in this world who think of God as a mean and an angry God. Oh yes, He is a God of wrath. Amen. Yes, sir, He will pour out His wrath. Amen. But today's the day of salvation. Amen. Today's the time to be saved. Thank you. Today's the time. Oh, it, there's coming a day, the day of the Lord. It is coming. Yes. And you, bet you, are, you are right to fear that day if you're not right with God. Yeah. You are right to fear that day. Glory be to God. But I tell you that perfect love will cast out all your fear. Amen. Amen. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Fear has torment. God doesn't want to torment Amen. you. God wants to help you. Yes. He wants to help each and every one. Whosoever. Amen. Whosoever will. He wants to help. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Beginning at verse chapter 4. The Bible tells us about that there's a nursemaid that has a a, a son, a, a young boy, he's five years old. And this young boy had been taught his entire life to fear King David. He had been taught his entire life to fear King David. Because this boy was born of Jonathan, Saul's son. And Saul hated David. He was envious of David. And this little boy had been taught fear David. And the Bible says that there was a, there was a war and that Jonathan and Saul went and fight, fought with the Philistines. And brother, they were defeated. And the nurse took up the little boy and took off running with him and fell. And the boy was stricken lame. Amen. He couldn't walk. He couldn't walk. And David had made a covenant with Jonathan, his friend. You see, Jonathan, Jonathan loved David Amen, yes. as his own soul. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 18 mm -hmm. that they made a covenant. You know that God has made a covenant with you? Yes, Lord. God has made a covenant with you through Jesus Christ. Amen. A covenant, brother, it's a promise. Amen. It's something that does not fail. Right. God's promises do not fail. It's impossible to for almighty, all present, all knowing God to lie. Hallelujah. Because when he says it, it happens. Amen. It's impossible for God to lie. Yes. And God, David, and Jonathan made a covenant just as God has made through Jesus Christ to those who will believe. The Bible says that when Jonathan and David made the covenant, that Jonathan took off his robe and gave it to David. He took off his, he, he took his bow and his sword, and he took all of these things, these things of power, and gave them to David. And here the Bible says that after Jonathan has died, after Saul has died, David says, I want to honor this covenant. Amen. I want to honor this covenant. And he asks a question in 2 Samuel chapter 9. He says, Is there any yet? Amen. Is there any? Whosoever is there any? That is left in the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jesus's, for Jonathan's sake. Mm -hmm. Is there any left that I can show kindness for Jonathan? I'm so glad that what God does, he doesn't do it for our name. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's Amen. sake. What God does is for his name and for his glory. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan yet hath a son, which is lame on his feet. 
And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is in the house of Maker, and the son of Amiel and Lodibar. Now that word maker, M-A-C-H-I-R, means sold. In the house of sold. And he's in Lodibar, which means no pasture. It's a dry place. It's a dry and weary land where no water is. The Bible says, Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. Now when the Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face in his reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold, thy servant, can you imagine this man who was always taught to fear David? He was of the house of Saul. He could have... He, it was likely that when he saw the chariot come to pick to take him, it was likely when he saw this that he said, Oh no, he's figured out that I'm left of Saul's house and he's come to kill me. He has come to destroy me because of what Saul did, because Saul was his enemy. He had no doubt had this thought and had been taught that in his life since a child about that how that how that David David was a great and powerful king no doubt that that Mephibosheth thought that that surely he was going to lose his life he was going to be taken captive for what Saul his grandfather had done but glory be to God David said unto him fear not amen fear not amen perfect love casts out all fear Perfect love casts out all fear. He says, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, that thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. The Bible says here that he says, Wherefore, wherefore would you look upon that thou, what, what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? The Bible says that Mephibosheth dwelt at Jerusalem and he did eat continually at the king's table and he was lame on both his feet. Look, brother, we were dropped by Adam, our father. We were dropped and we can't help it. We were born into sin Amen. in this world. Yeah. I can't help that. You can't help that. But God helped it. God sent his son. The Bible says that that, that he has surely he has borne our transgressions and carried our sorrows. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Jesus came to this world to heal us from sin. You know, sin, the effects of sin, bring sickness. They bring... They bring infirmities. It brings heartache and despair and troubles. Jesus simply asked this morning, For whosoever will of whatsoever disease, wilt thou be made whole? Wilt thou be made whole? Listen, if you can help yourself this morning, Jesus won't work in that area. He won't work in that area. He works with those that can't help themselves can't save themselves Amen. who realizes they can't save themselves he heals those who have no other choice no other help he heals those that have no other hope but God I ask you this morning where is your hope wilt thou be made whole wilt thou be made whole let us pray together Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you, Almighty Father God, Lord, for your word. I praise you, Father God, for the examples that you show us, dear Lord. Lord God, that our faith would be increased, Father. Lord God, knowing that today is our day, for Lord, we are here with you, Father. And Lord God, today is the day that we can come to you and we can pour out our heart and pour out our soul before you, Father. Lord God, knowing that those that come to you, you will in no wise cast out. Lord God, we praise you for that. And we thank you for that this morning. We thank you that, dear Lord God, that in you there's nothing to fear, dear Lord, if we are in you and in your love. Father, I pray this morning, 
Help each and every one of us, Father, to draw close to you, to honor you, dear Lord God, not just with our hearts, but to present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice. Lord God, that we may give you glory, that we may give you honor, Father God, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, in these things we pray in his precious and holy name. And amen. amen. Robin, if you have a song of invitation for us, uh, if you would desire to pray, uh, you can come this morning. You can come. Uh, brother, you can't weary God. It's a small thing to, for you to weary men. But where you weary God also, you don't weary God. You can come to God continually. And glory be to His holy name. If you're unable to come this morning, Jesus will come to meet you. And He'll say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. You can pray right where you're at, and you can call out to his holy name, and Jesus will meet you. But if you can come, I encourage you to come and kneel before the cross of Calvary. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Amen. Number two in the red book. Thank you. 
years old today. <laughs> Brother Jim, would you lead us? Pray. Pray.